Hi, I'm Scott Powell. I, along with many others, am a recent graduate of Code Louisville's front-end web development track. The project for this track was to develop a site of our own. I chose apextheaters.com, which is the home of the Village 8 Theaters and Baxter Avenue Theaters here in Louisville. Let's take a look at my redesign. Okay, I'm going to walk through this project from top to bottom, starting with the browser and then showing the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. My purpose for this design was to simplify the user experience for the average viewer. And you'll notice much fewer pages than Apex Entertainment's current site. I think that what users want most is more easily available. And starting at the top, the nav bars functionality comes from Bootstrap. And you can see that it's responsive. And in mobile, this header snaps up into the nav bar. And the header's design comes from the original site's font, and uh, I've used SVGs and gradients here for this spotlight effect. And the slider is the main feature of the site. Its functionality depends on a plugin called Slick, which I've adapted to have this film strip look. And selecting a film here dynamically changes this content below. And this uh, slider is hidden in all widths below 767 pixels. This image here becomes the main feature in small tablet and phone sizes. And as you can see, these large arrows up here are, and are appended to it. And as well, I've included a button for, um, for the trailer. It has this nice hover effect here when you click on it a modal appears and I'll play the YouTube video here and you can full screen it if you like and this section over here is a film description and there's nothing too special to see here except for this more info button um, I've included this API called my API films which supplies the information for this modal and um, well some of it's not that important the most important thing is this IMDB rating which does change over time um, so the next section is show times and pricing and down here is, is what I assume most users are coming uh, are, are wanting to see whenever they come to a theater website I'm using two jQuery UI widgets called tabs these are the tabs and accordion and these are the accordion it's down here and there's just so much information here and I think that this format makes it really easy to traverse. And here's what this looks like in smaller sizes. So you can select a tab and then see the different show times. Looks better when you reload it. And the last section of the HTML is this footer. And I'm just using Bootstrap's grid layout to have three columns here and in smaller sizes it does stack for readability. Okay, let's quickly go over to the events page. And these are pretty simple so I'll go over them quickly. Uh, this is basically just images and information I've organized using Bootstrap's grid layout and containers. With that Jumbotron header and here's what this looks like in mobile. And on to the about page. This is essentially just a well-organized block of text with some information about the theater. And down at the bottom here, I've included some contact information and a newsletter sign up. Okay, let's look at the HTML. I'll show just the index.html, not the other pages for the sake of brevity. Common to all three of the pages are the header section, links, navbar, main title, and down below the footer. Um, I've included Slick, the slider, jQuery UI, Bootstrap, my Oxygen font hosted by Google, 
font awesome for some icons I have in the footer and my own style sheet. Down under the footer you can see I have my JavaScript uh, script tags and I just prefer this over a document.ready function. So this is a fairly large HTML file but lines 71 through 386 alone are the slider. It's a lot of information so I've collapsed slides 2 through 10 and I'm just going to show one. Uh, at the top here you see I have an ID for each slide and these are used for the IMDB AJAX call. So this accesses um, IMDB.com and this is where that more info button gets its content. Um, and you can see I have two columns. The first one is the thumbnail and the second one is the slider description. Down here I have the video modal which is for the trailer and this is the more info button with the the modal for that more info button. And so this next section is the tabs and accordion section for the jQuery UI widgets. And this is essentially just uh, uh, some nested divs and description tags which display this vital information for the site. And down below, lastly, is the footer, which is mostly anchor tags, links, and you can see some font awesome classes to insert those uh, to insert those icons. And this is organized using Bootstrap's grid layout. You can see these columns. All right, let's move over to the CSS. I've chosen to organize my CSS alphabetically. I just find this easier to navigate. Um, I can search through it. And uh, if I were working on this project with other people, I would consider organizing in sections if that were easier for others to find information on it. And a lot of my styling is overriding the slick slider. So we go down to this, is you can see a lot of overriding these classes for slick. And I also have a lot of overriding of Bootstrap's default stylings. Uh, and one part of my CSS which isn't organized alphabetically is my media queries. And I've uh, accommodated for very small widths. And I use Bootstrap's default breakpoints for other media queries so that everything is in sync. It goes up to 1200. Okay, let's move over to my JavaScript file. At the top here, I have the slick slider initialization and settings. This next sec section is a, is a workaround I made for positioning the slider arrows for the smaller window sizes. And I plan to simplify this in the future, but for now it works. Down a bit more is the code for the more info button Ajax call. And I like um, jQuery's dollar sign dot Ajax function um, just for its ease. And you can see I'm receiving this um, callback in JSONP format. This release date code you see is just some um, reformatting of the returned data string or date string. And now uh, a little bit more. This is some string concatenation for the DOM insertion via the jQuery.html function. And there are two responses based on how many film writers uh, the API delivers. So here's with one with two, and here's one with just one. Down a bit more, you can see this on.click to call the Ajax function, and then on focus out um, to reset the content to say loading. And this next large section is something I found on the internet which allows bootstrap uh, a bootstrap modal to display a video um, from YouTube. This saved me a lot of headache and um, since this isn't my content I'll just go over it. And finally down here at the bottom we have just a little bit of code to initialize jQuery's, um, the jQuery UI widget 
halves and accordion. And that concludes my code overlook. Thanks for watching that. Most of the ideas I have for further development on this site, like a content management system or a ticket purchasing option, would require mainly back end code. So, I signed up for the Code Louisville Ruby track in the fall so that I can learn how to code for the back end. Currently, however, I'm learning AngularJS and I'm reading through an algorithms textbook so that I can improve my skills as a front end developer. I really enjoyed working on this project and I'm currently seeking employment as a front end web developer. Once again, my name is Scott Powell, a graduate of the Code Louisville front end web development track, and thank you for watching.